I've seen way too many amateur colorists just creating insane amount of nodes and they just think that if they got this action going on, then that must be really freaking impressive for the client. What's up guys, this is Kazi. In this video, I'm gonna share three tips that are gonna help you level up your color grading game. And guys, if you're enjoying the content, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness, follow me on Instagram, I post there every day. And on that note, let's roll the intro. All right, let's just say here's your project. It has these shots. So when you're starting out as a colorist, the first thing that comes to mind when you want to think about color grading is starting with the first shot, because that would make sense, right? That is an amateur mistake. What you really want to do is pick a hero shot. And what a hero shot is a clip that best describes the particular scene you're working on. So in this case, we have this shot then we have this shot, then we have this shot. So this right here, always go with the wider shot because anything that has the most amount of detail, that is what you want representing your entire scene. So I'm gonna start grading this shot. Let's just say if I just do my base grade and I add some warmth, and then I'm just gonna go ahead and add some teal into my image. I'm gonna take my gamma, bring it up, just keep my shot right here somewhere. Then I'm gonna go to my next shot and middle click. To paste that grade, I'm gonna go to another shot and middle click. So now that we start it, and then we can click on split screen and then choose neighboring clips. That's the best thing you can use to match your shots. So now if I'm looking at it, I can see that this looks the most neutral. This has a little bit more yellow in it. This has a little bit more red in it, but both of these shots are a little bit on the warmer side than what I got going on here. But because I started here, it gives me a good base. And then you can go in and make micro adjustments. But if you would have started on this shot, pasted your grade here, would have been a lot harder because here I can see everything. I can see this bridge, this detail right here, over here and then everything, all these buildings in the back, I can see them right here. Again, if I would have started right here, then my reference point to what these buildings should look like would have been off. So that's the concept behind this thing. I've seen way too many amateur colorists just creating insane amount of nodes and they just think that if they got this action going on, then that must be really freaking impressive for the client. This gives away that you're the biggest amateur in the game of color grading. So do not do that. I'm gonna reset this whole thing and I'm gonna show you get the most by doing the least amount of work. You wanna stay efficient. You're gonna be working on hundreds of shots. So you gotta have your, so you have to think ahead. Another thing that I've noticed is too many colorists will just start with curves and they just go, oh no, we don't like the primaries. I only grade using my curves. And then their curve looks like this. It will have ridiculous amount of points. And then just look what it did to my image. Just look what it did to my image. You understand what I'm saying? Like that's the perfect example. And then I've seen way too many people just going like this. Like they're just like doing this and they just think, oh my God, like, look how I made the sky pink and it looks so nice. Don't do that to yourself, okay? Let me just show you what I can achieve just by using this. You wanna create a cinematic look? Watch it happen right now before your eyes. I'm gonna start with my contrast. Okay, I'm gonna park my contrast somewhere around here. You want the film look? I'll give you the film look. Lift your lift, bring your gain down, and then add more contrast. And just look at this. Okay. Now, let's go back to here and let me just pull some contrast back. And now, let me just give you this. You want to give it a nice film look. Just watch my lift gamma gain. 
I'm gonna go back in my gamma. I'm gonna go into my gain. I'm gonna go back into my gamma. I'm gonna pull my lift down, go back into my gamma. Park it somewhere around here. Just look at that. This image looks great even before I touched it, but just messing with it a little bit, like look what I created. This all happened just using these and look, I didn't even go that far. Just nudged these just a little bit. You wanna do something even more fun? Mess with the offset. Just move it around a little bit around the shot and look what, and just find out what looks good and then park right here. I love that. Like I'm gonna redo that and then, or if you wanna just keep it in this transformer world, you can do that too, but just look. Now we pushed it even further. So I'm gonna do before and after, and I like the warmth that it's adding. Just look at that. This whole thing happened by using these controls and my contrast and pivot. That's it. This is what I'm trying to tell you. Don't get too crazy and just look at how pristine our image is. You'll be surprised looking at some of the no trees from your favorite movies and they're not as complicated as you think because those guys are working on thousands of shots. It's just not sustainable to have a node tree that has 25 nodes in every single shot. Even if you have more nodes, you guys have seen my node tree and it has around 11 nodes, but even then there is a method to my madness, how I set them up and how I stay efficient with that process because then I know exactly where to go and what to fix when somebody asks for a change. Let me explain to you what I'm talking about. So let's just go, this is shot with Blackmagic 6K in RAW. So let's find the LUT that I wanna use. So let's just, if I wanna use a LUT, I just wanna show you the difference. So I'm gonna go with Pocket 6K to extend it. And great, so let's shut this off. And this looks great, right? That's, that's great, like let's just print it. We're done. Let me just make a new version, get rid of this. And then let me show you this. I'm gonna start with my contrast and pivot. I'm gonna park it somewhere around here. I'm gonna go ahead and raise my gamma. I'm gonna start adding saturation. I'm just gonna crank it, I don't care, that's fine. I'm gonna take my offset and I'm gonna pull some of that blue out. I'm going to leave it somewhere around here and maybe there is a bit too much red in my skin. Okay. And if that's the case, that's fine. I'm going to go under my hue versus saturation. I'm going to click on red. I'm going to go right here. I'm going to pull some of that saturation down just a little bit. That's what I'm talking about. Pushing it as much as you can and then subtracting that. Okay. Remember when we dropped our LUT and we called it a day and it looks so great. Let's see if it still looks so great compared to this. So I'm gonna go back to my previous version. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Just watch this. This is what we got with the LUT applied. This is what we got without the LUT. With the LUT, without the LUT, you wanna give it the true black points if you're just kind of going, hey man, like the blacks might not be looking super black. First of all, they are because right here, the blacks are right there, so they're looking black. But if you want to level them out a little bit, then let's do that. I'm going to go into my shadows and raise them just a little bit. And then I'm going to bring it down until it's almost touching the bottom. And then I'm going to leave it somewhere around here. I'm not a fan of it but I'm gonna do it to make you happy because like a lot of the films that you see, they have a contrast similar to this. But let's just say if you wanna make it broadcast kosher, that's totally fine. Let's go back to our LUT and now let's go to our one node really grade because I could have also done this in this node as well. But just look at the difference. That's what I'm talking about. Go big and then dial it back. Because if you just 
do this and call it a day. Even if let's just say if I go into my saturation and I say, let's add a little bit of saturation and I bring it to like around 65%. It's still nothing compared to what I got going on and all the colors that I was able to pull. Just look at each color that we were able to pull and everything is good. Nothing is blowing out. There is no craziness that's happening here. And there you have it. Three tips to get you going as a beginner colorist. I hope you guys had a blast. Drop a comment below. Let me know what kind of color grading related stuff you want to see on the channel. Hit a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel for more awesomeness, and remember, work hard, get obsessed, get possessed, and I will see you guys in the next video.